everyone, and welcome to Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name, because it's all about Jesus living our lives on purpose for him. No matter what you're seeking today, I pray that you seek Jesus. No matter what you're following or you think you're following today, I pray you're following Jesus. And today we have on Malisha Johnson. She is going to share her story with us and she's going to share with us some exciting news. She's going to be in a magazine coming up soon in April and we're going to celebrate that today. We're also going to learn more about her and how God is calling her. I wanted to use the word promoting you. God is promoting you to a position of speaking and telling people about him. So I'm ignited really to talk to you. So how are you, Malisha? I'm doing well today. Thank you so much for having me on today. Yes. So tell us, how is God using you? I mean, not to ask you a big question, but like, seriously, Malisha, how is God using you? Oh God, I am overwhelmed and just amazed at God's goodness and his love for me uh, just throughout the transition. You know, I've been incarcerated um, before um, in 10 years and was released maybe not even two years yet. And God is just opening doors for me to share my story, uh, the transformation of what God has done in my life, been promoted on my job two times, um, just recently got a vehicle, magazine offers, just being able to just share the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done in my life. And I am just so amazed and overwhelmed at his goodness and his love for me. It's amazing. Well, you just said promoted. You got promoted? Congrats. Thank you. Well, actually, this is the second promotion. I've been on the job since May, and I received two promotions with since that time. So um, I, I'm just, I'm amazed. I'm just amazed at what God has done. So who say that what the devil means for bad, God can't turn it or use it for good because Amen. he has shown up to me in my lifetime. So yes, I am. I'm just wonderful for that and grateful to God for that. So I just want to share some scripture with you. First Peter five, six says, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he may exalt you. And then another scripture I'd like to read is just talking about this act of humility and how God will promote you. James four, 10 says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. I mean, wow. Like this is so great. Can you describe to us if it's okay, the posture you've been taking in your job that you feel you've gotten this promotion? Like, how did you get promoted? What did you do? Give us the secret. Who knows? (laughs) I could just say, I, I, I basically just, you know, I went to work and I did what was needed of me to do not just what was needed to me but I did over and beyond I tried to just go out and just find things that was needed without being asked yeah just treating people good you know when saw a need I just stepped foot in and and did what was called or not even called for me to do but as you read those two scriptures because I'm gonna tell you this um, humble is the key word there because the job that I'm doing, I'm actually working in um, a manufacturing job. And being a former business owner, I never thought that I would be working in a place that I'm working in. Mm. And throughout my incarceration, that's what God had to teach me. He had to teach me humility because that was one of the issues that I had in my life is pride. I wanted to I felt like I was one of the children um, that was building the Tower of Babel, you know, making a name for themselves. Okay, And God had to humble me. And incarceration taught me just that. It taught me to be humble. It taught me to um, uh, appreciate the things that you do have. Um, There are some people who have it worse, but God put me in a position in a workforce that I thought I would never work in. And that's the job that I have today. Yes. And it all started with humility. It all started with just being grateful and being content where God has placed you at. And that's where I can say right now, because I know that if I humble me, he will exalt me because promotion comes from the Lord. 
Amen. Uh, promotion comes from the Lord. And so the promotion that I received, I know it was from Jesus Almighty. Amen. Amen. Yes, Psalms. And I have some verses up right now talking about promotion on openbible.info. It really helps me with understanding what a word means in scripture and just brings up scriptures. I mean, that's all that's brought up right now and on the computer in front of me. It says Psalm 75 verse seven, but it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. And I thank God that he's lifting you up. I think it's so beautiful that you're talking about humility because I think a lot of people think humility is thinking less like putting themselves down. Like I am not good when that's not true. Like God is for you. He's not against you. You know, if God is for us, who can be against us really? (laughs) And that's the key thing. And, And as I get up is I have to remember, it's not about me. It's yeah. not about militia. It's all about Jesus. It's all about him. And yeah. if I keep him focused and if I focus on that audience of one, which is that Jesus, Jesus. you know, he says in his word, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. You know, so I have to stay focused on Jesus. I have to stay focused on kingdom. I have to stay focused on him. And I know everything else is going to come in place and in my life but the key word once again is staying humble because if i decrease militia and allow god to increase you know everything else will work out for the good you know so i'm just thankful to god and 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 giving me the opportunity to share my story my and i call it my road to damascus Mm -hmm. um i i thank god for giving me that opportunity so like I was saying, I have to just stay focused on knowing that it's all about Jesus. And that's what keeps me humble. That is not about militia. It's all about Jesus and doing what he has called me to do. And militia, when you just said focused on kingdom, that spoke to someone's heart. Because if you're listening to this, you're probably a believer. You probably trust Jesus and you might be going into your job or maybe you're not happy with your job and you're like, I'm here to find out how God can use me for his purposes. You know, I want to be used by Jesus, no matter where I am. I want to broadcast God's love. I want to broadcast God's love for all to see. So focused on kingdom is a practical thing that you can do today. And militia, that is what you're doing. And so can you paint the picture for me of what it looks like to you to focus on kingdom in your job? It's about eternity for me. It's about eternity. It's about looking back over my life and not being judgmental and looking at a person because of who they are or what they do. And just knowing that if God can save me, if God can rescue me, then he can do the same for them. It's about patience. It's about being open. It's about being transparent with my life. It's about humility and not worrying about people pleasing, but focus on pleasing Jesus and doing what can bring add souls to the kingdom of God, because God's word said he's not, he don't want any man to be lost and or to perish or not to know who he is. So if I can focus on the love that Jesus gave me and the patience that he had towards me, then I need to reciprocate that same thing through the other person so we can lead them to Christ which is adding to his kingdom and adding to his glory. Right. When you said that, it just painted a picture for me. And I don't know if you feel this way. When I'm working, honestly, and I'm talking with someone else and I'm just thinking about the conversation and moving forward with the conversation, sometimes I think, what would this conversation be like in heaven? And am I going to see this person that I'm standing in front of in heaven? Right. I don't know. That's how I get kingdom focused is I'm like, what if we were having the same conversation in heaven? You know, right. a lot of times, a lot of, I grew up wanting to please people. I was a please, a people pleaser, mm-hmm. but now I'm focused on pleasing Jesus. And I look at what do I have to do to please him? What do I have to do to make him smile? What mm-hmm. do I have to do for, for him? And I know what God, his word is that he wants you know, he wants everyone to, to, to receive him in heaven, to Amen. be there 
in heaven. So, but one of the things that I don't do, I was telling my pastor not too long ago, is that I build relationships with people first. That's my first thing is to build relationships. And my my pastor has been talking about changing the world. How can we reach this next generation? So I don't go out preaching Jesus. I don't go out telling someone what you got to do to be saved. I don't go out picking at their sins. I go out showing them love. I just treat people the way militia would want to be treated. I show them the love of Jesus. And then when they ask me, what is it about you? Why are you treating me this way? Then I begin to share my story and how Jesus has transformed my life and introduce him to the man that is in, in my life. Yes, but your boss. I just want to be showing them the love of Christ. Just And, and, and as your title and as the, the segment of your broadcast, broadcasting his love, that's what we do. We broadcast his love his by love. our lifestyles. So that's how we, not because of what we say out of our mouth, but our lifestyles, how we treat the people who feel like there's some people who don't even believe in Jesus. There's some Ooh. people who, um, this preacher said the other day, he asked the eight year old, where did he go to church at? And he said, what is church? Oh, you no, know, no, so yes. we yes. have to broadcast his love through us and our lifestyle. We are Jesus hands and feet here on earth. Holy Spirit, rain down. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I'm like feeling, yes, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit right now. I pray for the person listening that, you know, Malisha and I, we could fail you, but God yes. is never going to fail you. Like, I just want you to know that if you're kingdom focused, like what Malisha is saying, love God. And from that, you're going to love other people around you. You're going to show them the love of Jesus. And that is what this is all about. So, wow, this is amazing. And I would love for you to tell us more about what you're doing with Victorious Living Magazine, because I know you're going to be on the cover of their magazine in April, yes. which is huge. Yes, yes. I, I once again, I, all glory to God for this opportunity. While I was incarcerated, I was in the magazine and Christy was telling me that there's very likely for them to have a person who's incarcerated, you know, there because, you know, there's something in prison called jailhouse religion. So people can say one thing, but I tell you what, God um, showed me favor with her. And so even after I've been released, we would be, we still have a relationship. We still coordinate, you know, she'll call me, we'll pray just different things. And so She's just amazed at the different ways that God is using me in my life. And she asked me to do a follow-up story on what is going on in my life right now. One of the things that I'm doing, I have a ministry and there's different, there's three different parts to my ministry. One is called the compassionate advocate. And what I'm doing is I am helping those who are still incarcerated, you know, just on a compassionate side. You have so many different advocates out there, but what makes minds different is because we are advocating them from the love of Christ, you know, and I'm, I want to be God. That's one of the spiritual gifts God gave me is, is a spirit of compassion. And plus I've been there before. So we have that. Then I have a group called forever sisters and that's people who's been incarcerated with the federal um, prisons before. And what we're doing as a, as sisters that's been there is to be able to be a help to those when they get released, whether it's okay. with the job, whether it's with clothes, financial, whatever the case may be, we want to still connect, even though we're not incarcerated anymore. And so that's forever ministry. I meant forever sisters. And then also there's this speaking uh, ministry that God has blessed me with to be able to go out and share my testimony, share my road to Ma Damascus story. So as a result, you know, Christy um, asked me to do a story on what's going on in my life now. And to my surprise, I just thought I was doing a story, but found out that I was going to be on the cover, that my story was being featured. So all glory to God for yeah. that, to show people that's incarcerated, that you can come out and be different. You can come out and make a change. You can come out and build a legacy. So our past does not define our future, our past does not determine the plans that God has for me. So I'm, I'm just wonderful and just grateful to God for this opportunity. I thank Christy for even trusting the God that's in me to be able to trust me in the magazine, to be able to share my story 
and the transformation that God has done in my life. Yeah. And for those who don't know about Victorious Living Magazine, they are a prison ministry. You can get their magazine. Um, I mean, it's like $25 if you want to get a magazine for yourself. That's what they ask. And then you can give a magazine to someone who's incarcerated. And they're huge. I mean, they're all over and they even have a Spanish side. So it's English on one side and then Spanish on the outside. So prison outreach ministry, they have a magazine and then they go bring hope to those who are behind bars. So they actually go and speak. And that's what Malisha is talking about. It's just another component to Christy Overton Johnson's ministry, which I love her so much. She just is amazing. She's amazing. Yes, and, and I met her incarcerated, you know, and, and that magazine brought me hope. I would read some of the different stories um, and testimonials of the people that was in there mm -hmm. and just seeing the different things that God brought, done in their life. And I, I know I too have a story, you know, my story can't fit in that, that magazine alone because God has done so much in my life, but I definitely want people that are behind, not just, you know, I'm not even going to say behind bars, but that's living in prison, whether it's in a physical prison or a spiritual prison to know that God is able to open wide those prison doors and deliver you and set you free. Amen. So I do thank God for Christy and the opportunity that she allowed me to share my story to her readers, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Yes. This weekend, our pastor was saying that sometimes in when, when we're walking in life, it can feel like we're in a prison and God can set you free. And that's the message that you're saying right now is like, if you feel imprisoned physically, mentally, God can set you free. He can break down prison walls and he wants your heart. He, yeah. he wants your heart and he wants your yeah. mind. And yeah the moment of surrender for you when you were like, I'm giving my life to Jesus. When did that happen for you? That was while I was incarcerated. I was actually in the shoe, which is a, a jail inside the jail. And when I got in there of no doing of my own, I didn't understand why God allowed that to happen to me again. And I began to just kind of like cry out to God, God save me, deliver me. And at that point is when full surrender came. It's like, I saw God, I, I heard from him and I cried out to him and asked God to save me, was not just save me from that physical prison that I was in, but deliver me, deliver mm -hmm. me, set me free from the torment, from the shame, from the sin in my life. And that's when full surrender came and that's when my personal relationship with Christ began is while I was there alone. There was no distractions. There was nobody in there but me and the Lord. And I began to hear his voice clearly through his word. He just began to just speak to me on so many different levels. He began to show me things to come. So this season that I'm in right now, you know, just looking back over the years, God showed me this day. You know, some things I didn't want to receive at that time because I would ask God, no, not me. You know, no one is going to accept me back in my home or no one is going to receive me. But God, God, God does not lie. And he, so everything will begin to happen. But that's when that full surrender came. But that that surrender came with the relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. When you were saying, deliver me, set me free. I just feel like someone listening is praying the same prayer. God, deliver me, set me free. And what you said is that you found freedom in God's word. And John 8, 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth, capital T, truth will set you free. Not it might yeah. set you free. It will set you free. Can you tell us yeah. what freedom felt like in prison? Peace. Peace. Um, I was, I was feeling peaceful no matter what was coming up against me, no matter what storms, no matter what was happening. I, I felt peace because I knew God was with me. There we go. So God was with me. And I knew that as long as he's with me, he got me and he's going to take care of me no matter what storms I'm facing, no matter what man's saying, no matter what is arising at home, 
I knew that God was with me and that he was going to take care of me in my situation. So as long as we know that God is with us, that's all that matters. We, if we know he's with, he's the creator of heaven and the earth, you know, so he can do anything. So if we just get that assurance that know that God is with me, whether you're on drugs, whether you are, are, are struggling with any type of addiction or whether you're having marital problems or whether you have having problems with your mother, or your father or your children, that just know that God is there. He's with you. He's an omnipresent God. And he will. He, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I got you. I got you. And I, I had to rely on the fact that God was with me. He knows what I'm going through. He knows the situation and I'm going to trust him to work it out for my good. So this perfect piece that Malisha is talking about right now, if you were like, I need this, I want this, like you want to go to the candy store and get that candy, buy it and eat it, digest it and live it. <laughs> like you want that perfect piece. Yeah. What that means is Isaiah 26, three. And it says you keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. So I'm going to put Malisha's name in this. You keep Malisha in perfect peace, whose mind yes. is stayed on Jesus, is stayed on yes. you, is stayed on Jesus, because yes. Malisha trusts in you. You know, when you change don't always happen overnight, yes. but I, I tell you what, what is one thing about it is staying around the people who's trying, you're trying to go um, if you're trying to grow in Christ, be uh, surround yourself with those people who are striving for the same thing. I'm so blessed to have a church family. I'm so blessed to have a pastors that love me and love um, that love God first and love me. I'm a church family. And just me being able to share my story has opened so many doors for new friendships and new relationships. And, you know, one lady from church asked me, okay, we got to go to lunch. We got to go do this. So I'm just glad that I have people in my life who love Jesus and that will help me grow as well. So I will encourage you to, you know, find it. If you don't have a church home, find a church home somewhere. But I, I am so blessed to have a pastor, um, yeah. excuse me, pastors um, that, that loves the Lord and loves me. So that's very important is to find a, a church home, find relationships with spiritual people who strive to, to obey God in his word. Yep. Go where you grow in Jesus, yes. you know, God's yes. word. You want to go somewhere where they're talking about Jesus's word and, yes. and go there. If you're growing yes. in Christ, which is, you know, staying with their, your, you know, whose mind has stayed on you. Remember whose mind yes. has stayed on Jesus because he right. trusts you, you know, a God fearing church, then, then go and get yeah. in community because it is so refreshing to go to church. And then here's someone who is going through something very similar to what you're going through. <laughs> and you're like, Oh, wow. You don't even know and realize, tell your stories, tell your struggles. We, you know, we can't be a lot of times. The reason why we don't share yeah. is because we are ashamed of our past. We don't want people to know that, you know, I was that woman at the well, I had five husbands or, and the husband I'm with now is not my a man I'm with now is not my husband that right, I've been right. on drugs, that I've been on alcohol, mm -hmm. that I just embezzled this from a company or whatever case, but you just, the Bible says that we're overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony. Mm -hmm. So share what God has done for you because there's other people who have the same struggles as you. There's other people who's been through where you're being through, but if you don't never talk about it, how, your story may can deliver someone else. Yes. So be open and share what God has done for you and how his love and his grace and mercy brought you through. And what Malisha is sharing is not what the world would want to give you. So if you're listening no. to this and you're confused about opening up to someone or sharing your story with someone, that's because that's what the world wants you to think. Oh, you can't share that. You know, you can share what's good on Instagram. You can share the good stuff, the highlight reel, but that deep connection that Malisha is talking about is community with fellow believers. And you'll know, I pray that God gives you that understanding to know who to talk with. Um, but you know, as a female, you traditionally, you want to go to another female, um, yeah. and, and you want to have a friend. I mean, come on, right. Jeez Louise. Right. Everybody yes. wants a good friend nowadays. You know what I mean? So. Yes, yes, yes. So true. So true. Yeah. They don't have to be your age. They can be a little older. It's fine. You right. know, Hey, right. it might be better to have someone who's a little bit older than you to learn from them. You know what I mean? 
Yes, yes, that's so true. And that's one of the things I was telling my son this morning is that, you know, we can't all change um, the whole world, you know, but this is, we are Jesus' hands and feet. And so one of the things that I, I have, I have mentees. I, I find people and that the Lord draw me to, and I try to be close to them. I try to build relationships with them. So, you know, they can tell me, you know, some things that they may be ashamed to talk about. I talk about stuff too. So it'll show them that, you know, I have things. And so it helps them to be open up as well. So those of you who are looking for someone, or even if you want to be a mentor to someone, you know, there's people out there that's ready. They just need us, you yeah. know, and there's people who, who need you. So right. just go out there and do what God has called us to do and try to build relationships with people because that's one of the things he said, man should not live by bread alone. And I believe another word, even though we know the context of that scripture is the word of God, but I, I also believe that he wants us, us, we need each other to survive. Yes, we do need each other. I do not like to say that because I think I can do everything so independently, <laughs> like, right, right, right. you know, but I, I do need community. I do need my friends. I do need my family. I do need Jesus and thank yes. God for fellow believers like yourself. And, you know, we've known each other for probably more than a year now. I think we met yes. each other a year ago, right? Yes. 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 Uh -huh. So I, bit, yeah. Yes. And that's when I first heard your story and through Victorious Living, through their podcast and God is doing wonderful things in you. I'm so thrilled for you. I love what you're doing with Forever Sisters and your other ministry and then what you're doing with Victorious Living. So I do want to ask you what Bible verse is helping you in this season, but I would kind of like to ask you what Bible verse are you bringing to the prisons if you're, you know, going out with Victorious Living um, I guess what Bible, uh, uh, two and two, you know, what Bible verse is helping you in this season and what Bible verse are you sharing with inmates? Well, actually it's the same one, oh. Romans 8 and 28, and all things work together for the good to those who love God and to, to those who's called according to his purpose. Just to let you know that all things are going to work together for the good. It doesn't matter. It don't have to just be good things. It's going to be bad things too. It's all going to work together for your good. If you love God, you just got to stay focused. And I'm staying focused on that scripture right now in my season that everything is going to be just fine, Militia. Everything is going to work out. You just continue to stay humble. You just continue to seek God and it's going to be okay. And mm -hmm. even when I go into the prisons, all things are going to work together for your good, regardless of where you're at right now in this season in prison is going to work together for your good. Stay focused on God, follow his plan, follow his direction, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Amen. Earlier, you were talking about you have, God has given you the gift of the spirit of compassion and you called mm -hmm. that out in yourself. And I think that's beautiful because for whoever's listening, God has put a gift inside of you as well. And wouldn't it be so neat before you shared your testimony to call out the gift that God has given you like Malisha just did. So when you said that, and then you're sharing that you're talking to inmates about God is good and he wants good for you. You just have to love him. I mean, literally, that's just the question. Do you love him? Yes. Yes. Well, it's going right. to be okay. Like it's, and it's going to be good. It's going to be more than okay. <laughs> He's yes, overcome yes. the world, you know, yes. but I just want to encourage for whoever's listening to know what your gifts are. And if you don't know, ask a friend to coffee and a Christian, you know, or to lunch and, and ask them, Hey, what gifts do you see in me? And let them call out those gifts in you. We need that so badly right now to know what God has put inside of us to do for his glory, to get on purpose, to start living life with meaning for his glory. So thank you for sharing that verse, Romans 8, 28 with us. Yes, yes, yes. That's just, you know, there's so many different Bible verses that the Lord give me, but for sure, that is one that is with me right now in this season of my life. And I've been standing on it. Matter of fact, I know since the beginning of the year came in, which is just you know, not too long ago, two months ago, but even last year, I, I'm focusing on all things are going to work together for my good, mm -hmm. everything. And I'm just staying focused on that 
because regardless of what's going on in my personal life, what's going on in the life of ministry to come, what's going on wherever, it's going to work together for my good because I love God. And I know I love God and I just don't know about him, but I have a relationship with him. And I know that it's just like a, a personal relationship or with your husband or your spouse and you love them. That person reciprocate that love back to you. So because I love him, he's going to reciprocate his love back to me. Oh, so guess what? It, it's good. It's going to work. It's going to work. Yes. Thank you, God. And um, I do want everyone to get the victorious living magazine because it's not just for people who are incarcerated you can get one and then gift one to someone else they say i mean well, when i say they i'm talking about christy <laughs> but christy's come on the podcast before and she shared that if you give 25 dollars, you get a magazine and then you gift a magazine to an inmate so i just would like to encourage someone who's listening if you're wanting to give and you don't know who to give to first, you know, always give to your church period. Like that's give to your church. Um, but if you would like to give more $25 to victorious living, and then you can get this issue that Malisha is going to be on the front page of that comes out April 1st, which is April fool's day. Ha ha ha. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to share? I just want to just share that. Keep, keep it on. Keep, keep it. Don't give up. Don't get weary and well doing for in due season. You shall reap if you faint not. So keep, keep it on. Keep when the Bible says, or is there's a scripture that says the righteous man may fall seven times, but he'll get back up again. So even when you fall, just get back up again. Just, just get up knowing that God is with you, knowing that he will never leave you, knowing that he will never forsake you and knowing most importantly that he loves you. He loves you with an unconditional, everlasting love. Amen. Thank you so much, Malisha. And would you like for us to connect with you? Yes, if you will. Um, I have a ministry website called mljministries.org. That's mljministries.org. Or you can email me, the compassionate advocate at gmail.com, the compassionate advocate at gmail.com. You know, you can send me prayer requests. You can, you know, even if you would like me to share my story, I'm, I'm, I'm more than ready to share my story with you, your church, your ministry, wherever, just, just send me an email or just let me know. And I'm there because I want to broadcast his love. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Malisha. And at the end of every podcast, we always pray. Father, decrease us and increase you. In Jesus' Amen. name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you will also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakin.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest. <laughs> <laughs>